Today we're going to be making these simple anime characters in Blender. And if you're struggling with making characters in Blender, then this is the tutorial for you. Not only are these characters simple with a lot of great introductory to techniques, but also this is going to be the complete process so you should be able to easily follow along. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So for this one, we're actually going to use the default cube. Grab the default cube here and you can hit control three and then you can grab this object here, press period on your numpad to zoom in, and then press one to go into front view. So we can apply the subdivision modifier by clicking the little arrow here and doing apply. So press tab, switch to sculpt mode there, and we're going to grab this grab brush here. You can change the size of that cursor with the F key here, and we want something relatively large, almost the size of our entire object. And then under here, over the tool, we'll come down here to symmetry, Make sure mirror is turned off because we actually want this character to be a little bit lopsided. Just go ahead, grab a few random spots there. And essentially what you wanna do is flatten out the character a tiny bit and just kinda of add some random lumps there. Perfect, let's tab back at the object mode here. I'm gonna go into my front view. I'm going to grab the add modifier over here and search for smooth by angle. And I'm going to right click the character and hit shade smooth. If we go over here, we can drag this out. We're going to open the shader editor and click new. And let's call this Sprite for our material. We'll drag the base color out here and we're gonna search for an image texture. Make sure you select color. Click new here. I'm gonna change mine to 2048 by 2048 pixels. And I'm going to name this Sprite Text. Now what you wanna do is come over to your image editor. You're going to grab that Sprite Text, grab the image up here, click save as, and then pick a spot where you wanna save that texture. Next, we'll switch to texture paint mode. And with the fill button right here, what I'm going to do is grab this primary color here. And I'm gonna drag this down just to be kind of a charcoal gray. Now, if we click our object there, you'll see that it fills it in. And just by being a little bit off black, it'll give us a much more interesting look with our render. Now let's come here to the draw brush. And for this one, I'm going to turn on symmetry. So if I grab the symmetry up here, I can click X and you'll see that we can paint on both sides with that symmetry. Now for the eyes, instead of doing a pure white, I'm going to do this slightly off yellow. So just drag that into the off yellow there. And you'll notice here that when we draw, it's giving us a very fuzzy look and that's not what I want. So we'll come down here to the stroke and the fall off section. If we grab that fall off, You'll see we have a bunch of presets down here. Now we'll grab this one at the end and what that'll do is get rid of that fuzzy edge. And you'll see here, depending on the resolution, it may introduce a bit of pixelation. If that's the case, you can undo that and you can click this one right here and that'll give you something similar. And you can just grab and draw some eyes here. Now we're just gonna do slightly kind of lopsided eyes. Now what we want is this color here. So if we grab this, we can grab the eyedropper here, click that little charcoal we made, and then you can just add a pupil. Now, I don't want the pupils to be perfectly symmetrical. I want them to look slightly off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click two spots right there. Let's make the arms and legs next. So I'm gonna switch back out to object mode here, and I'm going to close this window here. Now, you'll see here that we have the center in the middle of our character. I'm going to switch into edit mode here and bring this up here just so that the character's kind of sitting on the 3D floor. And I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add a Bezier curve. Now, what I can do is tab into edit mode here and just delete those vertices. I'm gonna switch back here into front mode. And what I'm going to do is if you've been following along, your 3D cursor should be there in the center. If not, you can hit Shift C. And we're going to grab this draw curve button. Now up here, you have the option between drawing on the surface or the cursor, and we're gonna make sure that we're set to cursor. What that means is that when we draw, it's going to draw on the same plane as that cursor. So if I switch into front mode here, what I can do is just go ahead and draw some simple legs, just like that. And we're just doing kind of little scraggly legs, so I wouldn't worry about the look. Actually, the little more awkward it looks, kind of the more endearing it is. And you can see there that now we kind of have these warbly little legs, and we wanna draw some feet too. So we'll just go ahead and snap into top mode here, and we'll just draw some little toes off here to the side. And then if we grab our box select here, we will then just move that down into place over here and make sure that's in top view too. And you can grab the little gizmo there 
kind of move that all into place. Then you can duplicate that and rotate that 180 degrees on the Z by hitting R 180 Z, and then just move that back into place. And then just duplicate it and put it up there on the hands wherever you want. And I'm just gonna kind of fast forward here because I'm not really doing anything special. So it's just a bit time consuming. So now you should have little curves drawn for all your hands and your legs. Once you're happy with the look of those, we can begin adding a bit of thickness to them. So what I'm going to do is grab this in object mode. We're gonna come over here to the curve data tab and down here under geometry, we can change the size of these. Come down here to the bevel, make sure that you are on round and then here in the depth, we're gonna turn this up. Now this is going to get way thick really quickly. So I'm gonna set mine to something really small like 0.05. Then you can also click fill caps and that will make sure that these ends are filled as well. Now we need to add some shape. So if we tab into edit mode here and we begin grabbing our vertices there, we can hit Alt S and then we can begin changing the shape. So in general, we're gonna want these to be really skinny here at the end and likewise on their toes as well. We want these fingers and toes to be super skinny. So just hit Alt S and just kind of start scaling all these down until you get a look that you're happy with. But what we're kind of looking for is like a thick to thin taper, just like that. Just go ahead and do that all around until you get a shape that you are happy with. It's kind of giving it that stick figure look. So with that, we have our little arms and legs. Now we need to add a material to our arms and legs. So we will grab our arms and legs and let's actually convert these to a mesh. So if you do search and hit convert to, you'll get this menu that pops up and you can hit mesh. We'll click new here and we'll just call this arms and legs. And what we wanna do is drag this over here. We bring out our image editor and grab our sprite text here, we can grab this charcoal gray here so that it matches. So if we switch to our render view here and we come up here, we can turn off our scene world for now and just get a better view of our character. And you'll notice our character is a little too shiny. We can fix that by going to 0.75 on the roughness. And if you come down here to the specular, since we're going for a stylized look, this is okay. We can turn the specular down to like 1.5 and that's gonna give us a bit more of a matte look. And you can do that same thing on the arms as well to ensure that they match. So next we're going to add the hair to our character. Let's grab our character's body here and just start naming a few things. So I'm gonna name this body. I'm gonna name these arms and legs. And we can grab the body here and we can hit duplicate. So hit shift D and let's name this hair. And we can turn that off for now. Let's grab the arms and legs and the body and hit control J. And now we have that all into one object named body. Let's turn body off and we can turn the hair on here. Now. We'll come over here to the particles tab and we'll add a new particle system. And we're going to switch this on to hair. Let's lower the hair length to something reasonable. Let's do something around 0.3. And you'll see that that's getting us a much more kind of natural length. And let's change the number to something like 75. Then we'll go into the data tab here. We'll create a new vertex group, call this hair. And in edit mode here, we'll just grab these front faces that are surrounding the eyes here. And if you press C, you can grab this little circle select. We'll grab that and we'll move just all the faces around the eyes there. And you can wanna probably grab a few around the edge as well. And we will press Control I and click Assign with a weight of one. And what that's going to do is give all these a weight of one. So when we come back over into our hair system here, we come down to the vertex groups and we click density hair, switch back out to object mode you'll see that it won't be getting it on the face. Sometimes there's some bleed through on the edges there. You can either change your vertex selection or just do a different seed until you get off of it there. Great, now let's up these segments here to six. And then for the source here, we'll leave this to faces and we'll change this to random first. So if we come here to the viewport display, you'll see that it says strand steps two. So even though we have six vertices on these hair, it's not actually showing all of them. So we wanna turn this up to six just so that we can see what we're doing. And then we can come up to the forces here. If you take that Brownian and I would hold shift so that you do a small value, we can just grab these until they look just slightly curled like that. So mine's 0 0.061. Now we can change the hair shape to make these actually a bit thicker. So if we come down here to the hair shape, we can grab the diameter root here and I'm gonna change mine to something large like three. And then I don't want them to fade out into nothing. So I'm gonna set the tip to something like 1.5. So now we kind of have more of that kind of just 
thick, random look. Now, if we come to the viewport display, we're gonna click off show emitter. If we come to render, we'll turn off show emitter. And then what that'll do is make it so that our emitter is not visible in the renders. Now, if we click body and turn this on, the reason we did that is because if you look around here, you can see how some of these are actually floating above the surface ever so slightly. So now we can just take our emitter object there, which is the hair, and we can just scale that down ever so slightly. And what that'll do is make it so that they are now all kind of jutting out of our character. And you can make further adjustments to that if you want. Next, you can grab that hair and you can grab the body and hit Control P, keep transform, and now you can move your body around and have the hair follow. Now for the little rock, it's pretty simple. If you come up here to your preferences and your add-ons and you search for extra objects there, we'll come over here into this 3D viewport. You can hit Shift A, and under Mesh, you're gonna have a bunch of extra objects now. And you'll see that you have Rock Generator now. And you can actually just make a little rock there, and you have a bunch of settings here that you can tweak with the roughness and the detail level and all that, and a smooth factor. So we'll just go ahead there and pick something that you want. I want a detail level around two. This looks good. We can grab this, scale this up, and we'll just put this little piece of coal into our character's hands now. We'll grab the material over here, click new material, and just call this coal. We'll make this a black material, and we can turn the roughness up. I'm gonna change this to shade smooth by angle, and that'll just kind of give us some harsh edges there. Now for these little characters with arms and legs, I obviously just deleted the arms and legs, but if you wanna know how I made that little gummy crystal, what I did here is I added a cube, and then I added a subdivision modifier, so I'm just gonna hit Control 2. And if I tab into edit mode here, I can have all the faces selected. And if I press I, I'll inset. And if I press I again, I'll do it on these individual faces. So what I did is just inset a little bit. And then I press I again and control. And that allows me to kind of bring out that way. And you can see how I'm already starting to get that gummy crystal look. Then I switched into sculpt mode and made my brush a bit bigger. And then I just walked around and shift clicked everything, which will smooth it a bit. And then I just kind of smoothed out some of those harsh edges there and then just shade smooth there. And then for the material, then I added an object info node and I just took that random, drug it off into a color ramp, plugged that into my color, switched this to constant. And then I just began choosing kind of random colors over here. And then every time I duplicate it, I'll get a different color. So that's how I went about creating those little gems. Taking a look at the rest of the scene here, you can see I just added more little random rocks with that dirt texture on it, just to add some pebbles and interest and variety there. For each character, I went ahead and changed the particle system to a different seed so that they all looked a little random and then changed the rotation on them. And then the lighting setup here is pretty simple. It's just a couple area lights and all of these are just kind of warm lights surrounding it. And if I go into the top view here, you can see I'm just hitting from each back angle there and then from each side. And then this light right here is actually a gobo light from a Blender Market Pack. And you can see how that has a texture in the light just to add a bit of interest.